this is a little pelvis model, but if you have a look in here, you'll see that all of this red muscle group, that is all pelvic floor. So it's quite a large stretch of muscle. So when we talk about your body's core, some people assume it's just the abdominals and the oblique muscles, which are at the front and the sides of your body. Whereas I like to refer to your core as a wine barrel shape. Welcome to our special mini series on women's health, hormones, and menopause, launched in conjunction with World Menopause Month. This special series of episodes is dedicated to uncovering, understanding, and acknowledging the multifaceted aspects of midlife health through the lens of expert opinions and science-led treatments. Each episode aims to elevate the conversation around safe and effective healthcare for women, focusing on deepening our knowledge and recognizing the unique and profound challenges women face during perimenopause and beyond. I'm Baha Etmanen, the host of Ageless by Rescue podcast. Join me as we tap into a wealth of expertise from leading medical and allied health professionals, exploring a range of topics from hormonal optimization, sexual function, aesthetic beauty, and cellular wellness. My goal is to empower listeners with the information and expert insights they need to navigate menopause with confidence and optimal health. This series is also a great way to spark conversation with your healthcare provider and to share with employers, partners, friends, and family to help better understand the peri and menopause changes and challenges. I invite you to share these conversations and make them your own. Welcome to our special series on women's health and menopause. Today, we're exploring the transformative potential of innovative technologies in enhancing pelvic floor and core strength, as well as sexual function. Joining me is Heather Ford, the founder of Core Restore Co Clinics. Heather is a pioneer in integrating holistic health solutions with cutting edge technologies to boost pelvic health and overall physical wellness. Known for her ability to tackle some of the most challenging topics, including sexual function, menopause, perimenopause symptoms, urinary incontinence, vaginal atrophy, and postpartum concerns with ease and humor, Heather is celebrated for her science-led yet always engaging approach. In this episode, we're going to deep dive into all aspects of pelvic floor wellness and the life-changing technologies Heather has embraced to significantly improve her clients' lives. Join us as we discuss not only the often neglected topics of wellness, but also the tangible benefits these technologies offer to individuals managing the complexities of postpartum recovery, menopause, and beyond. Heather, I am so excited to have you on the show. This has been a long time in the making. We've known each other forever. I know. What, are you, about 10 years now, do you think? Yes. Are you feel like this incredible pivot. And the next time I saw you, you had studied health sciences. You're on your way to doing a PhD. You've got this clinic network of Core Restore. You are an internet sensation on education and entertainment, I would like to say, on women's health particularly core health, um, pelvic floor health. And that is not the Heather I met 10 years ago. So congratulations to you. Uh, yeah, it's, I feel like I've lived a couple of lives in the last 10 years. But um, it's funny where the universe takes you when you let it just guide you and let it take you on an authentic journey instead of trying to push against it. So here I am. I am so honoured to have you host this important conversation. I think that... Um, you know, you, as I said, you've got a background in health sciences, but you're also a qualified Pilates teacher and you own multiple clinics in this space. So you have clinical experience and yeah. evidence on what works and what supports men and women, but we're talking mainly about women on this episode in a, a postpartum period, in perimenopause, postmenopause, uh, and in fact, any time in their life where core strength um, pelvic floor health, sexual function, yeah. all of these things become something that she is concerned about. Yeah. And I think that's why I'm so passionate about it as well, because first of all, it's something that no one ever teaches us. It's not really taught in high school biology. And then so many women hit that postpartum stage or the perimenopausal stage. And all of a sudden they're like, oh my gosh, what is going on with my body? And we know through research that the core is such an integral part of every single movement you make. So 
if you flex your big toe, before you even go to move that big toe, your pelvic floor zips itself up and contracts on to help stabilize your body. If you go to lift your arm up to your shoulder, same thing. The first muscle that's switching on is your pelvic floor and your core to stabilize. So it's such an underrated muscle group that is also so important, as you mentioned, in so many different things from movement to sexual function to incontinence. And, you know, these are some of the topics that most people, with it's not something they often discuss over a cocktail with a friend or even comfortably with their uh, medical practitioner. And I think that that's kind of what I want to unpack here. And mm-hmm. specifically what I love is that your um, core restore model has really leaned into support from great technology. And at the top of this episode, I did say that um, we've done this episode in partnership with BTL Aesthetics. And the reason I invited them to be part of this series is that their technology is doing what, you know, traditional methods didn't help women really achieve for 40, 50, 60, 100 years. And then they come up with this technology or a series of technologies that really work, work yeah. fast work easily, work painlessly, and work relatively cost-effectively. And I think that because you've really invested in it in your business and you have these technologies in it, in addition to the education and the other services you provide, you'd be such a great person to kind of unpack some of this technology. So yeah. let's talk about the foundational aspects first. That sounds great. Look, I do want to touch on as well, I think when it comes to technology and this tech that we use in clinic that is created and engineered by BTL has been around for decades. So we do have some really incredible longstanding research, but there's still such a, it's almost like a stigma attached to taking a shortcut when it comes to pelvic floor health or core strengthening. And it's almost like, I don't want to cheat. I want to go home and do the exercises by myself. And I mean, for women who come to me with kind of that concern and they almost feel embarrassed about asking for an alternative to traditional pelvic floor activations or Kegels at home. And I'm like, this is literally what modern medicine is about. Like the entire medical system is about shortcuts. Pharmaceuticals are about shortcuts. You don't have to deal with headaches or or pain or, you know, chronic illnesses. Like that's the whole point of medicine. So it's just about for me trying to educate and be like, just because it's your pelvic floor, it does not mean that you shouldn't be able to access a medical treatment to help get you better quicker. So let's go to the foundations of the area. I'd love for you to give us a little biology lesson. I'm wondering if Penelope, the pelvis, your model is with <laughs> us today. I've said earlier. <laughs> we named her the other day, by the way. Sorry, we're calling her Penelope, but yeah, we thought she needed a name. She does. She does. And she's a hard worker. She's been around the traps, this one. So this is a little pelvis model, but if you have a look in here, you'll see that all of this red muscle group, that is all pelvic floor. So it's quite a large stretch of muscle and it goes from each side of the pelvis all the way up to the bottom of the lumbar or the lumbar spine around the toxics. It's a really important support network there. It hits up the front of your pubic bone. And if we have a look, there's three kind of key layers of muscle when it comes to the pelvic floor. So, you know, uh, oh, someone with a bulbous uh, body, you'll see here, it's got this like almost like a stingray shape that envelopes around the vaginal canal, the urethra, through the perineum up here, that cross section of muscles and around the anus as well. So it is quite a large group of muscles. And when it comes to the pelvic floor, most people understand it as the base of all the floor of the three organs that you have down there. So you've got a bladder, a bowel, and a uterus. But it not only provides that floor foundation for those organs, but it's also got the three holes in it. So you can see in here. So one hole is, as I said before, for urethra, which is where you wee from. One hole is for your vaginal canal, which is where we give birth from or for some people or where we get our periods from or where we have penetrative sex. And then the final hole is your bowel. So not only is it supporting and helping make sure that your organs are functioning properly, but it's also serving as a framework around each of those holes. And like any muscle, when a muscle is weakened, it's stretched or laxed. And when a muscle is overly tight, it's contracted and tight. And what we want from a pelvic floor is a functional pelvic floor, one that can relax entirely and one that can contract entirely when you need it to contract and when you need it to relax. So a couple of little examples of that are, for example, 
when you're giving birth, you want your pelvic floor out of the way. So you want it to be relaxed and out of the way. Uh, during penetrative sex, you want to be able to relax your pelvic floor, obviously be able to engage in that comfortably. When you need to do a wee or when you need to pass a bowel movement, you need to be able to relax the pelvic floor around those holes so that you can let that movement pass. And then at other times when you're going to jump or skip or laugh or cut some moves on the dance floor, you want to be able to contract your pelvic floor around those holes to help keep things protected and to avoid risk of leakage. You know, one of the things that I learned when I started following your content is just how many organs this area supports. Yeah. And the other thing that I learned is that it's not chronologically age dependent, the function of your or the health of your pelvic floor area or your core area. It can be um, due to any number of reasons. So it could be from stress, illness, medication. It could be genetic. It could be from a, a trauma. Mm -hmm. So love that um, when you talk about pelvic floor health, you do address all of that. With regards to the one of the key topics that I always get asked about is incontinence. Yeah. And it might be something that comes as, a, a, you know, a late onset experience, or it might be something that someone has lived with for a really long time. But you have always uh, educated that there are two types of incontinence, and it's really important to understand what you're suffering from so that you can have the right treatment. Completely. So when it comes to incontinence, I think the first thing is to explain that any sort of leakage, it doesn't matter how small it is is not normal. It's super common, but it's not normal and it's not something anyone should have to live with. So I think when we say the word incontinence, it's about really explaining that incontinence can be from a tiny little couple of drops if you go out and have a drink with a girlfriend and try and dance, all the way up to having to wear panty liners uh, when you go to the gym or more extreme. So when it comes to incontinence, there's bowel incontinence, which is obviously leaking or smearing of feces. There's also urine incontinence, and that is when it comes to leaking from the bladder. Now, if we're focusing on the urine incontinence side of things, which is probably a little more common, there are a couple of different types. I think the two key common ones is stress urinary incontinence, and that is that leaking that women and men experience when they're coughing or jumping or laughing or sneezing, anything that's creating, it's called intra-abdominal pressure, but extra pressure around that core system. If you've got a weak pelvic floor, that pressure is hitting down onto the bladder and that's where you're getting that leakage. The other type of incontinence is called urgency incontinence, another really common one. And that is when, for example, I get that little message in my brain that's like, I need to do a wee. But instead of having five, 10 minutes to get myself and find a toilet, whether I'm walking around Westfield or whether I'm in the park with the kids, I feel like I have to go now. And I feel like I may even leak on the way to the toilet. That one's called urgency. You can also have a combination of those. You can also have frequency, which is where you're going to the toilet so regularly. But yeah, there's a lot of different types out there. And you're right. It's so important to try and identify what one you're experiencing. And that way you can get the best advice for treatment recommendation. Now, before we get into the technology that you employ in addition to the consultative approach in your clinics, can you explain the role of core health and pelvic floor health? Because they're two different things, but they work well together, right? Totally. And this is another kind of, I guess, a misconception because when we talk about your body's core, some people assume it's just the abdominals and the oblique muscles, which are at the front and the sides of your body. Whereas... I like to refer to your core as a wine barrel shape, right? So the bottom of the, and we're all very familiar with what a wine barrel looks like. The bottom of the barrel, the bottom of your barrel is your pelvic floor. The top is your diaphragm. And then the muscles around the front and the sides are your abdominals and oblique. And at the back, you've got your back muscles. So your spinal, um, your spine and your spinal extensors or your multifidus muscles. So it's really important to understand that this wine barrel shape needs to have integrity or stability from all sides. So the entire thing has to be functional in order for us to be functional as a whole, right? So if one side of that wine barrel shape is not pulling its weight. Oftentimes we end up in what's called compensatory muscle patterns. And that is because our bodies are so incredibly intelligent. And if one muscle's not pulling its weight, the other muscles around it band together and try and help out to make sure that you can operate at your best. 
So when it comes to your core strength, we really want to make sure that we've got integrity from all sides of that wine barrel shape. So your tummy muscles, your pelvic floor, we want to make sure your diaphragm's working properly. And that way we're creating a holistic approach to core health. Because if one side's not working, then the other sides are going to take over and they may end up overly tired. I got it. And so talk to me now about how in your clinical practice you would approach the consultation and how then you put uh, someone on a program or a technology or make recommendations for exercises and lifestyle changes that are going to help support both the pelvic floor and also the overall ecosystem. Yeah. So I think the first step in consultation, and this is why it's so important to have a practitioner or a clinician or someone in the health industry that you can trust and that really kind of understands the body as a whole, is it's getting a really good and in-depth understanding of the symptoms and also the medical history, any sort of genetic predisposition. So that just means how was your mom and dad? Like what sort of, did they have any chronic illnesses? Did they have any sort of issues when it came to pelvic floor? Lifestyle is really important. So are you moving on a regular basis, whether it's, you know, traditional exercise or even just walking every couple of days, understanding diet, understanding any sort of allergies or intolerances that people have. Also a hist any history of endometriosis or PCOS or anything in that realm as well, because that can also play a really key role in what's going on with the pelvic floor. Once you kind of nut out the symptoms in the medical history, life stage is also very important. So are they postpartum? Have they had babies? Have they had pregnancy? Are they perimenopausal? Are they postmenopausal? Because all of those things can also impact. We know from particularly from a woman's perspective, how hormones can impact your entire body and mental health at any stage in life. So they can also impact the pelvic floor. Once you get a really un a good understanding of what's happening in that person's life currently, stress levels can also play a really key role in what's happening with the pelvic floor. Then you can kind of, it's almost like, I call it the Nancy Drew effect, putting together all of these puzzle pieces like a detective and starting to get a really good understanding of the person as a whole and figuring out what the best course of treatment would be from there. Whether we are dealing with a hypertonic, which is overly tight pelvic floor, whether we're dealing with a pelvic floor that's weak and needs some strengthening, whether we're potentially dealing with core weakness or abdominal separation, understanding if they've got lower back pain. So it's really about putting all of these puzzle pieces together to figure out the best course of action for the individual. And when you do this, I mean, I have to say, when you talk about it, I've never had such a detailed examination ever, not by my gynecologist, not by any clinic. And I have friends who've come to your clinic and they have said, like, it was extraordinary, the level of detail that your clinic goes to. I think it's, I think just having the conversation as part of the consultation is so soothing. And mm -hmm. so refreshing because if, you know, if we're being honest, most medical experiences feel rushed. There's very, very few interactions we have with many healthcare professionals where they take such a deep background of our history and then they open up the conversation to things that we might be uncomfortable with. So I kind of feel like just that process alone is so fundamental for not only the practitioner or the clinician to understand where you're at. But sometimes saying things out loud helps you understand where you're at and what you're worried about and what you're embarrassed about and what you're scared about. So I think that that really deep consultative process is just amazing. Uh, and it would be really uh, revolutionary to your overall health and wellness. Yeah. And I think one of the other things that's really important to us is being able to empower women to understand the amount of times that we hear in clinic of women who are constantly stressed and they clench their jaw and they struggle to relax or sleep at night and they're not getting much sleep. And we kind of explain to them how this all fits into your core and the fact that if your pelvic floor is zipped up tight, your diaphragm is up high too, which means you're going to struggle with the deep belly breathing, which means your body's going to be in fight or flight mode regularly. So it's almost like an empowering situation where a woman can be like, I had no idea these things were related. How do we stop the cycle together? And I think that's the other really, it, it was always very important to me when I started course that 
uh, we served as a place to give women back power when it came to their bodies because for so long we have all this stigma attached to our vulva and our vagina and we have women that don't really understand what goes on down there. They don't want to look at it. They've been kind of taught that this airbrushed version of themselves is what they should aim for so they're embarrassed by their own body parts. So it's really important to me that we create space for that and acknowledge a lot of trauma that women have been through over the last, you know, any sort of kid that's grown up in the 90s will understand entirely the body image issues that come with it. So we really want to create a space where women are taught about their own bodies, not only their anatomy and the correct terminology for their anatomy, but also the basics of the mechanisms of action, which is once again, a fancy, sciencey way to say the basics of how things work. Because when you, when you understand, for example, how, the basics of how a muscle works, you can then use that knowledge in so many other de- ways and aspects of your body. So next time you do go to the doctor, when you have, you know, a sore bicep, you can understand the basic of how that bicep muscle works. So you're more empowered to ask questions and take control of your own health in future. That's, yeah, I think that that's incredible. And we were talking a couple of days ago about advocating for your own health. And you're absolutely right. Something that you said is so true. Once you understand your anatomy, once you can speak to it correctly, once you understand how things work, instead of being bamboozled or led by someone who thinks they know your body better than you, mm-hmm. you can self-advocate and you can you can better pinpoint how you want to communicate your concerns. So I think that that's amazing. And honestly, if you are listening to this episode, please, please, please follow Heather at Core Restore. Her content is amazing. Honestly, you, I'm glad you're doing a PhD and I really think you should do a PhD in communication for women's health because the way that you communicate is extraordinary. Would love for you to now introduce the technologies that we said that you've employed as a cornerstone of your business and why you chose this because there are lots of options out there. I'm curious as to why. I've experienced the M Cellar Chair and the M Sculpt. Mm-hmm. I do believe that they are revolutionary, but I don't want to kind of go into my own experience. I'll let you talk about it from a clinical perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So, completely honestly, the reason I initially brought in the M Cellar and M Sculpt is because I tried it myself after my second baby. And I can honestly say, after one session, I felt such a change in my own body that that drove me to creating Core Restore Co as we know it now. So it was my own personal experience. When I was looking at bringing it into Core Restore Co as we know it now, the things that were really important to me as someone who has a background in health science and medicine was making sure that everything that we did was backed by research, which is where BTL's technologies remains unparalleled. Like there are dozens of research papers that are all peer reviewed that show us that what we see in clinic is actually what's happening. I mean, anecdotally in clinic, we quite literally see change in lives every single day, which is what drives me to get up out of bed every day. So we know that with m it's a 95% success rate, and that's in less than three weeks of treatment. So women for decades, for eons, have been working to strengthen their own muscles at home. And research shows us that when it comes to your pelvic floor, doing Kegels or pelvic floor contractions every day, you may see a small change in about four months. And I don't know any woman out there who has the motivation all the time or the mental space to be able to devote time to doing pelvic floor contractions every day for four months to see the slight. And I bought all the gizmos too. Didn't you buy all the gizmos before you tried them, Sella? I swear to God, I have all the balls. I have all the uh, tensing machines. I've got the app that kind of prompts you to, you know, in your car, all of that. We've all been through that. And it might be a great technique, but compliance is really, 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 really hard. It's hard. You have to be super motivated and you have to be super dedicated to keep doing it all the time, every day, multiple times a day. Yep. And for me... That's where, exactly as you said, medicine is about shortcuts. Medicine is about progress. And I agree with you, the technical specs and the compelling peer-reviewed results and publications on this technology are really, really compelling. And as a woman, it makes me think, yes, 
give me the shortcut. Can you explain the technology? Absolutely. So it's called electromagnetic technology and it uses hyphen. So basically it means that the tech is completely patented uh, to BTL. So you can't get what BTL offer in MCellar and MSculpt with any other brand or with any other competitor that may be on the market. So uh, the MCellar chair goes through 11,200 pelvic floor contractions e each session that you do, which lasts about 30 minutes each session. It's completely non-invasive, which is something that is also really important to me as a woman. I know that there are occasions where invasive treatments or surgery are absolutely not a necessity for a woman. And I do not want to discredit that at all. But as someone who has been through childbirth, the last thing I want to do is be poked and prodded again. So having an option that is totally non-invasive, not painful at all, you can sit there, you can work, you can read a book, you can just relax while we watch the kitties or we distract the toddlers for you. So you do have that time to get treated is incredible. So both of the technologies use the electromagnetic tech. It force contracts muscles for you with MSculpt. That's the one that we use primarily on the stomach muscles, which are the front part of the core system that we were talking They're about like before. They're like pads, aren't they? You put they the are. Pads. It's, yeah, it's like a big paddle Paddles. or a big hand. Yeah. Yeah. And the really cool part about it is when you use the MSculpt on your stomach, although the technology comes out of the paddle, it's because it is electromagnetic, it's actually coming further out. So it comes out in like a conical shape that you can feel all the way into your obliques. And a lot of women feel an alleviation of pressure or back pain quite quickly when it comes to MSculpt because we know that one of the most common compensatory muscle patterns for a weak tummy or a weak core is using your little multifidus muscles on the back. So you end up with a lot of back pain, chronic lower back pain. But when it comes to MSculpt and MCellar, the other incredible part is that the engineers have worked for decades to find the perfect amount of contraction speed and intensity to be able to create new muscles. So for the first time in a lot of our lives, we're creating, it's called hyperplasia. Once again, fancy sciencey way to say we're developing on our own new muscle fibers. So once we hit, you know, a few decades on, our body goes into muscle degeneration, which means we can't create new muscle fibers by ourselves anymore. So we're quite literally using the technology to create muscle fibers that you could not create by yourself in any other way, shape or form. So with MSCOP, we see an 11% reduction in ab separation. That's after four sessions, which is invasive, no mm -hmm. penetration into the skin, nothing. So yeah, that's great. It's incredible. How can you have that treatment? How, is it is it too late if you want, you know, you gave birth 20 years ago and now you want to have it? Or No, it's never too late. I do recommend women hold off after birth for a few months, particularly if they've had a C-section. And the reason being is because at Chorus Door Co, we're not the type of clinic that just want to get people in and out. We really want to make sure they're nurtured. And I feel like new mums have got so much going on in that first couple of weeks to a few months. But it's really important just to embrace that bubble, look after yourself and look after your bubby. And then when you're ready and you're feeling like you are ready to prioritize yourself again, that's when we're on hand to call. But yeah, absolutely never too late. I think we've got, we've had a woman who was almost 90 in our, the Shire Clinic of Chorus Door Co. She was the most beautiful woman and her name was Nez. She's happy with me to share her testimonial, but she had been wearing pads for the last five decades of her life. And within... No just over three weeks. She no longer had to wear pads. She could make the drive from Wollongong, which is where she lived with her beautiful husband who would drive up twice a week to come get her treatments. She could make the whole drive without having to stop for a toilet break. So things like that, it is never too late. I always, there are cases, of course, when there are things going on that we may not be able to treat. So for example, the late stages of prolapse. But once again, it's really important that you call and get some advice and we can, I can talk you through what to expect and we can help you find a practitioner locally that may be able to help you. We're not the type of clinic that if you aren't eligible for treatment, we say goodbye. We try and set you up with a team, even if it's not us, that can then take you on the rest of your journey to health. We've talked a little bit about incontinence, but I'd like to have the conversation about sexual performance and sexual enjoyment, which is a really core side effect and benefit of having a strong and healthy pelvic floor and core uh, muscles. And you educate on this really well. And you talk about all of the things that can impact 
this area. So I'd love for you to speak to how this technology and also just understanding what happens to your body and why we get impacted. Yeah. So I think this is another part that I'm so passionate about because for a lot of women, we've kind of grown up, whether it's been movies or magazines that tell us that our sexual pleasure is second to that of a male partner's sexual pleasure. And we see it to this day where sex starts and ends when a male orgasms. And we don't really see it start or end when a female orgasms. We're just kind of like along for the ride. And if it happens, it's great, which is absolutely silly. Like it's completely against everything I believe in. So your pelvic floor is a key part. In fact, it's probably one of the most important parts for a female when it comes to climaxing or orgasming. So the pelvic floor's job is to get us to reach climax. It needs to go through two phases. The first phase is it needs to relax entirely and then it needs to contract entirely. And it is the difference between the relaxation and the contraction that gives us the intensity of the orgasm. So what we're aiming for is someone who can relax really, really well and someone who can contract really, really well because that will equal a really intense and pleasurable orgasm. And also you want a pelvic floor that is strong enough to keep that orgasm going because then you get like a longer orgasm, right? So if you have a think about the way that you feel when you orgasm, it's almost like women describe it as this wave of pleasure. Now that is all stemming from the pelvic floor contraction and relaxation. So the longer and the stronger that your pelvic floor can contract and relax, the longer and stronger that orgasm is going to be. Now, as we get older, our bodies obviously change, particularly through perimenopause, where um, those hormone levels that are dropping can create a called muscle laxity, another sciencey term to say muscles that are weaker or looser. And obviously, if your pelvic floor is frameworking around the vaginal canal and then it's getting weaker or looser, it means that you may not be able to grip or have as much sensitivity in the vaginal canal as what you used to. So by strengthening your pelvic floor, we're going to increase the ability to grip and obviously increase the sensitivity and the pleasure that you'll experience during penetration. The other important thing to understand is if you've got a pelvic floor that is too tight, then it's going to grip around the vaginal canal and make penetrative sex not only uncomfortable, but oftentimes really painful. So it's something that I also like to educate women on, and that is that sex should never be painful unless you want it to be. Because if we create pain or fear when it comes to sex, what our body does is it stores that. And then next time we go to have a, a sexual experience, we subconsciously race, getting ready for the pain or the fear that we're about to experience. But then of course, if you're bracing, it's going to make things even tighter. So, so many women end up in this cycle of painful penetration that keeps getting worse and they can't get out of. And it can all be related to this subconscious bracing of the body. So we really need to kind of put an end to that. And one of my biggest tips with that would be whenever you're having a sexual experience and you're finding yourself bracing or experiencing pain, stop. There is absolutely no shame in stopping and do something else. Because as I said before, sex is not about penetration. It should not just be about you know, penis in the vagina. It's about so many other different things that you can try. Your bodies are incredible. And so whatever you experience that gives you pleasure or your partner pleasure, go for that instead and, and take away the penetration angle as the end game. One of the big concerns with the drop in estrogen is mm -hmm. vaginal thinness of the tissues inside the vagina and the canal and also dryness. And so that's one aspect of it separate to what you were talking about, which is the ability to contract and relax effectively. The, so we know that vaginal estrogen is a great tool in yeah. addressing dryness and thinness. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering how the technology that you have also addresses the relaxation and uh, the contraction uh, when you are in a sexual encounter. Yeah. So if you've got a strong pelvic floor or a functional pelvic floor, which is what Amcella is creating and creating pelvic floor strength, then it means that you're going to be able to grip or contract when you need to during penetrative sex. And also you're going to be able to contract and get that really intense and deepening of the orgasm for you. Now, when it comes to the thinning of the vaginal wall, 
the actual skin of that, the estrogen cream, as you said, is a really incredible option for women. And one that I still think women don't have a great understanding of, and they don't understand that there are so many incredible treatments out there for them in the medical world. HRT can be a really good option as well. So it's really important to equip yourself, keep an open mind and look at the options out there because there are some incredible ones. When it comes to dryness and the thinning of the vaginal wall, we can help when it comes to supporting around the framework of the wall with the pelvic floor muscles. So once we can contract them properly or create hyperplasia, remember the new muscle fibers that are ripping everything together, it can feel like you're getting better support there. And then in combination with an estrogen cream, it can create a much better penetrative sex sexual experience for women. You also talked about when someone has an overly tight pelvic floor area. Uh, Most people talk about uh, it not functioning well and not being able to grip, but what happens when it's too tight and how, what are some symptoms of a, a pelvic floor area that's too tight? This is another thing I'm so passionate about because I think so many women assume that if they leak, they've got pelvic floor weakness and it's absolutely not the case. So It does sound counterintuitive, but if you have a tight pelvic floor, you may also leak when you jump or skip or cough. And you may also experience urgency incontinence, which is where you've got to rush to the toilet and you can't hold it in time. And that is because although your pelvic floor muscle may be tight, it's probably really fatigued from being on all the time. So leakage can also show us that you may have hypertonicity of the pelvic floor. Painful penetration is another symptom we kind of look out for. Painful penetration can be a combination of hypertonic pelvic floor, overly tight pelvic floor. It could be other conditions like vaginismus. It could also be prolapse. If you've got maybe the early stages of prolapse and during penetration, you're feeling pain internally, it could be hitting maybe one of those organs. Another symptom of hypertonicity is constipation. Because if we think about our mechanism of action again and what's happening with the pelvic floor, we know around the bowel, you've got a tight pelvic floor, it could be really hard to let a stool out. So it's about trying to understand all of these different things. And we also find that uh, your pelvic floor and your jaw is actually interconnected with fascia. So I don't know if you know what fascia is. It's kind of this, imagine a spider web of tissue that runs through your body, um, but your pelvic floor and your jaw are interconnected with that fascia. So they oftentimes mirror each other. And if one is really tight or grippy, or you find that you clench your teeth a lot, oftentimes it can show us that that's what's happening with your pelvic floor as well, which then goes into this cycle of potentially elevated stress levels. We find that a lot of people that are highly anxious or type A or have a really stressful job tend to be bracing often as a stress mechanism. And then that leads to a bracing of the pelvic floor, which leads to hypertonicity too. And so can this technology of the M-cella or the M-sculpt assist with the hypertonicity as well? So what we would do in clinic is if you do have hypertonicity, we try and look at what's called compensatory muscle patterns. Because remember how I said our body is so incredible that if one muscle's really tight, oftentimes the muscles around it become weak and reliant on it. So we would try and identify during through muscle testing or a series of questions, what else is going on with your body? We then try and equip you with ways to help alleviate the hypertonicity at home, whether it be with stretching, um, trying to incorporate some more like lowering cortisol level activities, whether it's walking in nature, maybe some yoga, and look at helping guide women to treat that way. There are cases though where internal assessments are necessary. Like we want you to get treated. So pelvic floor physios can be incredible at helping alleviate hypertonicity by doing internal muscle work or muscle release work. And there are lots of other options out there as well when it comes to hypertonicity. So we try and guide as best we can and help alleviate the hypertonicity by strengthening the muscles that have gone weak. So a lot of the time, the core or the tummy muscles at the front um, end up to be uh, end up being the weakest link, which is where M sculpt is incredible at coming in because we know that it can increase the muscle tone there for women. That will then ideally alleviate the load that that core pelvic floor is is taking, and then hopefully give it a, a fighting chance to relax. But it is about taking a really holistic approach to it. Can I ask you how long does it take? You mentioned it. You know, one session is 
it gave you an experience that you, you had a noticeable difference in how your body performed and felt. For me, it took about three mm-hmm. to to have that sense of, oh, something has changed and for the better across lots of things. Definitely my posture too. Mm. I thought my posture really improved as a result of the treatment. And I was having, I just had Cella and I had Scop separately. But I can imagine if you were having two at the same time, the, the speed of the treatment would be great. But can you kind of guide us as to, in your experience, how many sessions do you have to have it as a combination therapy? How far apart are the sessions? Mm-hmm. What are some things that, you know, you might want to know before you consider going down the path of MCELA or MSCOL? Yeah. So it's so funny that you bring up posture because your pelvic floor and your core muscles are integral to your posture. So if you imagine what happens when you're getting everything stable and switched on, all of a sudden you can stand taller. So that is probably one of the first things that women highlight or flag when they do a treatment with us is that they feel like they're sitting taller or standing taller. They feel longer and leaner because all of a sudden the muscles are kind of holding them in and switching on. Now, when it comes to treatment protocols, we try and stick as closely to the peer-reviewed research as possible. Uh, which is two sessions per week over the course of the treatment. So for Ancella, it's recommended the six treatments, um, which means that you're with us for about three weeks worth of treatments. And with Sculpt, it's four treatments. And when it comes to Sculpt, it's a 19% reduction in fat, simply because for the first time in many years, we're switching on muscles and we know that muscles are the key burner of fat. So it's a beautiful side effect. Um, and we also see a 16% increase in muscle tone and 11% decrease in abdominal separation for women. And that's after less than two weeks of treatments. And as I said with Amcella, it's a 95% success rate in less than three weeks of treatments as well. It's wild, wild, wild. I know. Especially for stews. It's especially for things that you're embarrassed about, especially for things that stress you out. Yeah. And the fact that women have this as part of their mental load that they have to deal with every day and they feel such shame about it, it breaks my heart. Like I know how hard it is to be a wife, a mother, a business owner, a full-time worker, you know, studying, trying to make the world a better place. Like all of these things that you're already trying to juggle, having to think about oh, I shouldn't wear white pants today just in case I leak or thinking about whether or not you've got to pack some spare undies. Like no one should have to deal with that or pay for penetration. Like all of these things, there's not something a woman should have to deal with in this day and age. So yeah, for us to be able to change that and give women a total 180 in just a couple of weeks is amazing. There's been a lot of information in the news recently. I don't know if you've seen about the pain of the insertion of IUDs, the insertion and removal of IUDs. And how there's going to be actually an inquiry about some of the pain management during medical processes. Yeah. And as you said, you know, I'm a mum too, and I, I had a really difficult pregnancy and birth story. I had placenta previa. I was laid up on my back for seven weeks before Lily arrived. I was bleeding out all the time. It was really scary. And then I also had muscle atrophy from not moving for weeks and weeks and weeks. And so rehabilitation was the first thing I needed to do. The first thing I needed to do was be able to stand or walk or squat down to pick up something. So mm-hmm. for me, when I discovered technology like M Sculpt that could quickly get my muscles back into action, it was really, really compelling and it really, really helped me. But one of the things that I do like about this technology is that there is no pain. And I think that in we really have to forget about that awful mantra that we were told when we were young. That beauty is pain, that a certain amount of pain is acceptable, that it's okay that if we're uncomfortable, we should just grit and bear it, grit our teeth. I don't believe that's the case. I think, as you said, we put up with so much. There is so much going on for our bodies, to our bodies, with our bodies. That the last thing we should be putting up with is a a course of treatment that further traumatizes our body and is something that we dread going to. So for me, And I guess that's why I've developed a relationship with the companies. I am so grateful and I'm so happy I can recommend this technology because it's not going to hurt anyone. It's not. It really is not. No. And I think women's healthcare is decades, if not more, behind men's healthcare. And all of the research shows us. I read a paper the other day that it was only something like 6% of research papers have been solely devoted to 
to women in when it comes to study participants. So it's so behind. And I think it, there's also this kind of other element where particularly as a, a mother, but also as a woman, it's like you have a baby that's healthy. You should just be grateful. Or you have a husband that helps you. You should just be grateful. And it's like this complete myth that we should just sit back, grin, and be grateful for what we have. And no, like that's 1960s stuff. Like we have come so far forward where all of us are so independent. And it's about time that the health system and particularly like postpartum rehabilitation kept up with toward masses, right? So another thing I want to touch on is that pain with the IUD insertion that you mentioned. Like we know vasectomies forever have been given an anesthetic for men, so they don't feel anything. Yet IUDs, you're quite literally clamping an internal organ. Of course, it's going to be painful. And the fact that there's no pain relief at the moment is wild to me. But then let's look at the ongoing concerns with that, because as I mentioned before, what do we do when we're getting ready to feel pain? We brace. And the impact on the pelvic floor when it comes to that can often lead to hypertonicity of the pelvic floor, which then has this other run of on of effects where you can't do deep belly breathing, you're stuck in the shallow breath stage, your stress levels are elevated, penetration becomes really painful because every time something comes near you, you're bracing even tighter. And then we're sending women down a track where sometimes the only options are totally invasive because there's been no intervention earlier, which is why I think I get so upset or worked up about this because I feel like there are so many people being let down on the way. I want to talk about something that we we just touched on is that, you know, for the vasectomy, there's pain relief. And I'm pretty sure if men experience dryness, irritation, clamping, all the, you know, back aches when it came to their sexual organs, I kind of feel like they w- we would have been a bit further along in our research and maybe uh, the devices, the chairs, the uh, technology would have kind of been fast tracked. But the truth is that the m and the m technology are also helpful for men's health, right? For men's pelvic floor, men's sexual function. You can also use that to treat. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So we do have men in our clinic as well. Obviously, we're very female-centric, but as part of that, we create a nurturing environment for the men in our lives too. So Particularly men uh, post-prostectomy, it can be a really incredible treatment uh, to help alleviate the incontinence that's in so- associated with that. So any sort of male sort of leakage or incontinence that's associated with pelvic floor weakness, we can also quite quickly treat. Um, and that's something that I advocate for separately. Um, so I'm working with local councils to try and get sanitary bins placed in the men's toilets as well, because we know that men do have to wear incontinence products and until they can come in and get an error and sell a treatment, there needs to be options for them to be able to discreetly and hygienically dispose of their incontinence products as well. So it is something I love the men in our lives and the fact that women's healthcare is behind does not mean we have to discredit men by any stretch. When it comes to um, sexual pleasure for men as well, it's really important to note that the pelvic floor plays, once again, a really key role not only in libido, but also in ability to get an erection and maintain an erection. So the pelvic floor's job is to relax, to be able to let blood flow into the penis, to be able to get an erection. It's then got to contract to be able to hold the blood flow in the penis for, you know, a standard amount of time. And if either one of those things are not working, so the contraction or the relaxation, it can create sexual dysfunction for a man as well. And so just to recap, it's the same kind of process. They, a man or a woman would come in, they would be seated on the yellow chair and it's about a 30 minute program that runs, that delivers the pulse and also the contractions. Yep. And then if necessary, you would also use the air bulb to build muscle and restore muscle. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Depending on what the symptoms are or what the compensatory muscle patterns are, we tend to use M Sculpt and M Cella in collaboration with each other. Or if there's only one body part that seems to be the weaker link, then we'll focus on that one body part. You have treated so many people in your clinics and you're about to open a new clinic because I understand it in Bondi that's coming soon, which is very exciting for us Eastern girls. If you were to wave a magic wand of whether it be technology, a medication, device, something that would really help 
anyone who's listening to this really conquer all their concerns around pelvic floor health. Is there anything that you think is still missing in, in the world of core health and core strength and pelvic health that you would love to see launched? Look, my big passion in life and what drives me is preventative medicine. So I think if we can aim to create a world where Mcella and Msculpt are there as backups, but most women have all of the information to prevent them from having any of these symptoms in the first place, that's what I'd want to create. So I think there's a couple of things, firstly, when it comes to that, and it is quite political. So I think Firstly, it's important to educate women in high school on their pelvic floor and their core and the importance of that. I also think it's important to educate the males in the room on a woman's body and what child, what to expect when it comes to childbirth and what is asked of women um, during pregnancy and childbirth because I don't think there's enough respect. And during, yeah. and during sex, because that can impact your pelvic floor health. And per- the pelvic floor function and your core f- health and function. Yeah. And I think female pleasure is another thing that's not really discussed in school or sex education. Once again, it goes back to sex starts when the male gets an erection and it finishes when the male doesn't have an erection. There's no real talk about the female having a clitoral erection or climaxing. So the education side is very important to me. I also think postpartum rehabilitation should be better covered by Medicare and there should be a clearer path of rehabilitation for women after they leave the hospital. Uh, Because currently, a lot of the time you may see a beautiful midwife, but there's not really any pelvic floor assessment that's going on. And that we know someone leaves their pelvic floor in a dysfunctional state will increase the risk of prolapse and increase the risk of surgery in the future, which is going to cost more money and take more time out of that woman's life eventually anyway. And then the other thing that I would really love to intervene on, and that's something that you are already doing a really incredible job, is when it comes to perimenopause and educating women on what to expect when it comes to that stage of life, but also equipping them when they're in that stage of life with a holistic understanding of their body and a range of health practitioners to help support them through the next phase. Well, I would definitely say Heather Ford for president of Women's Body, (laughs) because as I said, I absolutely love watching the content that you create. It's so informative. It's so warm and it's absolutely, it it breaks down all the barriers um, on so many topics. I want to thank you so much for being on the show, but also I'm excited to announce that you will be speaking at the Ageless Radiance Club and you are a very intentional guest speaker of the day um, because I wanted to bring your secret sauce, your magical uh, ability to communicate all of this information in real life. I cannot wait to be part of it. And if you have any questions that you want to bring to me, bring me all of the short and curlies. I will be happy to answer them. It was wonderful to see you. I'm so pleased we finally got this done and I'm looking forward to sharing you in person at the event as well. Thank you again. And thank you, BTL Aesthetics, for sharing Heather with me and your wonderful devices. Thanks, Baha.